<laughs> Why can't I hear anybody? Do you hear me? I do. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> I <can> see you. <laughs> Julie said she didn't have the link, but I just sent it to her, so she should be logging on. Julie's listed as an attendee right now. Why is that? Did you send her the panelist link or the attendee link? Is it possible you sent her the, attendee? the link that I just uh, clicked on to and came on? I sent her the same link that I have. Oh, uh, yeah. She's showing as attendee with her hand raised. <sighs> okay. You should be able to switch her over, I think. Well, let me see if I can find her. She doesn't show up for me. Oh, attendees. Yeah. Are you uh, able to switch her over? Yeah. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hi, Julie. You can hear me? Yes. Cool. So Maureen, normally we have um, everybody on one screen. I'm only seeing one person at a time. I just sent you the link. Did you get it? I did. And you clicked it? I did. I don't Try know that. why it's doing that. Uh, Julie, that you can change that with speaker view up at the top, right? I have no controls at all. None. Oh, uh, yeah, I I'm think that's send because you the you're whole an thing attendee. Again. I don't know why it would do this, but okay, let me send it to you. Okay. I'm going to exit and come back in. Okay. Because all of you should have gotten the link. Yeah, I got it in email. I I didn't get an email, but I I came in from the link on the agenda. Uh, on the website. Yeah, I don't I don't know why that would happen. Oh, for the love of God, come on. Yeah. Because when I do the Zoom meeting, I send out everybody, all of you, an invite. And that was probably two weeks ago that that was sent out to you. Was there, and I could go back and look, was there- September 22nd. On? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, it was September 22nd was the invite. Okay. I don't know if that's helpful, but. It might be, thank you. Nope, Julie is still coming in as an attendee. I don't know why. As the host, are you able I, to switch her? I did. Okay, there you go. Hi, Dave. Hello. Sorry I'm late. I had a computer problem. I had to restart my computer. We hadn't started yet. Perfect. There we go. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. And see. Okay. okay. That's what happens when we do things too far in advance, Maureen. Apparently so. <laughs> 
Okay, it looks like we're waiting on two people. I'm gonna send Monica a note and tell her where to look for the link. For link and um, I used the link from the email from Maureen on the 22nd. Yeah, yeah. that's what I just sent her. There comes Monica. There she is. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Sorry, I um I was on another Zoom meeting and I I just thought, oh, they'll just click in and it was buried in my email so deep. So thank you for the date. That helped tremendously. I had the same Very issue if that makes you feel better. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Do I want to send Kara the same message? Um, she I I did. I did. Okay, good. There she is. Okay, great. So I'm going to welcome everyone to the call and call this um, the regular meeting of the Code Enforcement Advisory Committee meeting on October 28th, 2020. So uh, let's go ahead and start with a roll call. This is Julie Bowden, Chair of the Code Enforcement Advisory Committee. Sonia Strong. Thank you. Colleen Dickerson. Carson Green. Cara from Japan. And then I think Monica is the last one. Sorry, Monica Johnson. <laughs> I'm having, I have a lot of screens up right now. I apologize. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Okay. Okay, um, just as a reminder before we get started um, with the Zoom calls, it's really important that we give everybody a chance to speak. So I'm asking members to mute themselves until called upon to speak, and I, I appreciate that decorum. Um, so item number two on the agenda is consideration of minutes from our prior meeting on uh, sept September 27, 2020. Would someone please move to approve? I move to approve. Second. I second. Wonderful. Any corrections or discussions? Sure. Um, and I think that I'm on the minutes. I couldn't print out again, so I'm trying to read it from another screen. Uh, under subcommittee updates. Uh, there's a note that says animals and park rule, new park ranger hired under police department. I wanna know what, have, has it been hired? And because I don't remember that being um, set, you know, that it, they have been hired. I didn't know what, what that's gonna happen. That I think it, um, the, the minutes, I put that in there because it did happen. And um, uh, Supervisor Lewis announced that he had been hired and was under the police department. Okay, but I guess I can wait to ask the questions then under something else. Can I ask for a clarification for that? I wasn't aware that a uh, park ranger had been hired yet um, because it's in next year's budget. I, I could be wrong. Supervisor Lewis? Uh, I think the clarification was that we were going to be hiring. It was part of Got the it. budget. Got it. Thank you for clarifying, for catching that. Okay, we'll, we'll correct that. Any other discussions or corrections? All right, so is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended and a second, please? Uh, we could just a friendly friendly modification to the standing motion. Um, since I made the motion, I accept the change. Ma Ma Monica, did you second? Yes. You're <laughs> muted. 
Shoot. Monica, you're me. Thank you. I'm sorry. I've got to clear off all these screens. I keep losing you guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I, I second. Sorry. All right. So please vote by a show of, of hand those who uh, approve the minutes as amended. I, that looks um, like uh, all has approved. Thank you so very much. So the minutes as amended are approved. The next item on the agenda is the public forum. Maureen, do we have any visitors? Okay, I think I think I read your lips that said we do not. No, we do not. <laughs> so we'll go on to the uh, next item on our agenda, which is code enforcement statistics for September. Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, it's nice to see all of you guys again. Uh, just going over the statistics, if you've had an opportunity to review them, um, I do want to let you know that tomorrow is the last day of our seasonal code enforcement officer. Um, he has completed uh, his assigned duties um, and that budgetary item has come to an end. Um, but I, I'm happy to report that that seasonal code enforcement officer has inspected every single uh, exterior from public right-of-way residential property within the city of Inglewood and any of those violations that were noted they were issued a formalized warning letter and again just to emphasize this was a very quick uh, inspection with no follow-up very little uh, documentation it was really meant to be a formalized educational warning opportunity um, based off of our statistic of almost 97% compliance. So we're quite proud of this. And I believe the city manager uh, intends on ha uh, having the seasonal code enforcement officer back again next year. So, and I shouldn't say officer, it's more of a technician. They have very limited authority. They're not sworn. Uh, they only observe and issue um, educational materials. So you'll notice that we did have a, a huge jump in the number of um, weed complaints that we had based off of uh, the efforts that that particular technician did. Um, we continue to see uh, increases in trash and litter complaints over the last month. And it is consistent with the same time last year. And it's usually around this time where we're running into the accumulation of uh, trash and junk, um, especially as it comes to people doing a lot of extra yard work this time of year. So we may even see a little bit more of an increase into next month just because people aren't uh, removing or trash services may not have efficiently picked up those trash and debris and yard waste from the uh, fall season. Um, you'll also notice that we continue to have an increase in animal control calls for service. Um, and uh, it really just highlights again, um, the number of calls for service we receive that are animal related. Does anybody have any questions about the statistics? I, I do. So um, the, the the seasonal code enforcement officer, how long did we um, have them? So initially we were hoping to have them in place by um, June 1st, but due to the coronavirus situation, hiring um, freezes because we weren't able to interview or have people in, um, that person started in the middle of July. Thank you. Any other questions for Supervisor Lewis? Um, uh, Monica? Sorry, I, I, Monica had her hand up. Yeah, I, I just have a, a general question about the animal, um, the issues with animals. Are most of those about um, pets or, are, or do they have to do with um, wild animals? Like if you just had to roughly break it down in general, like what percentage have to do with you typically it's about 20% wildlife. The rest are usually domestic animal related calls for service. So wildlife, what we would include in there would be um, issues with dead animals, dead wildlife, such as squirrels, raccoons, skunks, um, any type of concern or complaint that we had related to um, wildlife could be birds are considered wildlife and then coyote sightings. Um, we do, uh, that is included in the animal controls. And I believe we only had one or two last month of the sighting. Okay. Yeah. Colleen, you had a question? Uh, actually, I have four. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, just one quick question. Uh, what code do you use uh, 
for your summons and complaints on off-leash dogs. Um, specifically, it kind of falls into two sections, but the ordinance um, for running at large would be 71A3. And is that the one you use mostly for off-leash? That is the one that says that it is um, unlawful. So we can't write for definitions. Definitions set the example. And so if you were to look at the definitions under 71A1, that specifically highlights all of the definitions um, that go into effect for that specific ordinance under that title. Okay, I guess I understand that. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of other questions uh, relating to uh, statements you made last meeting. And if I've misunderstood you, please correct me. Uh, I think in the last meeting, you said that all violations of code are criminal. Did I misunderstand that statement? And if not, what in the code says that? Well, I think, you're gonna, I think it's best for you to address that to the city attorney's office because she can interpret the ordinance uh, more finite than I can with that. Okay, well, then, then my second question is, did I misunderstand your statement that you would change the process or skip steps in the process when a property owner has been warned before on a code violation, even if the said owner complied within the time set? Um, I think it's really important for you to refer back to 15-3-2, um, the administrative abatement process. It outlines our specific process and what we can and can't do. It also has a uh, very specific uh, information related to uh, code officer's discretion. Well, I, I understand that. To clarify, uh, in several meetings, uh, notably uh, August of uh, 2018 and July 17th of 2019, uh, the police liaison commander, Tim Engler, and the deputy chief Watson and city attorney Brown said that the process outlined in Title 15 as the process was to be followed for Title 15 codes, uh, Title 6 noise, and Title 7 Chapter 1, and the process specifically to be followed. Uh, I don't read in there anywhere where you change the process no matter what, how many frequent, you know, how many violations were uh, is that correct or my misunderstanding? Uh, so I, I, I need a point of order here. So we're talking about code enforcement significant events in September. Um, so I'm confused about a, a meeting in back in 2018. How does that relate? No, it's just it's just clarification of the process. It was confirmed what was in Title 15 was the process. And I specifically wanted to know why, you know, if there was a, an option in that process to skip steps. And I understand from, you know, history, because this was confirmed, that the code, the process had to be followed in all cases. And I just wondered if it had been changed or not since he specifically said he could change the process depending upon the number of violations before. Monica, you're muted. Sorry, sorry. Um, I'm just, I'm a little confused. Um, I thought we were talking about questions about the report that Officer Lewis has presented um, and what you're bringing up, to be quite honest, um, I I would need to I would like to be able to look at, at what you're talking about and know um, how it relates to what we're talking about. And so I just wanted to interject that perhaps this is new business that can be brought up another time. Um, I just I I'm having a hard time relating to how this relates to what we're talking about. Can I explain that, please? These were brought up, these questions were brought up before under uh, 
under code enforcement significant events because it has to do with the process. And I just wanted to know if that was an accurate understanding that he can change the process because it has to do with his enforcement activities. Well, I, I, I would like to move that we reconsider this question on another meeting because it is off topic and the, the people that are sitting on this committee have no idea what you're talking about and don't have a chance to understand what you're referring to. I, I understand that you're, I, I think I'm hearing that you're questioning the process, but we don't know what process you're referring to. And the Title why. 15 process. Okay, so um, I, does anyone else have any idea on, on how this fits in what we're talking about? I, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to clarify a statement he made in the last meeting. If we don't want to go there, I'll just pose my second question, which has to do with uh, enforcement and the statistics. Okay. Okay, my uh, final question is uh, Title 6-5-1 defines code enforcement ability to issue summons and complaints on certain titles. It limits Title 7 to Chapter 1. I want to know, have, uh, are any of the uh, uh, summons and complaints that have been issued, were they, did they specify Title Seven, Chapter Six, like interference with officers in the performance of their duties, or devices uh, to trap feral cats. I, I don't have any information to provide to you at this time, Colleen, about that. Colleen, uh, is is this appropriate for a records request? Um, because uh, no. the rest, the rest of us are not following along with you here. Okay, I was just trying to verify some things. I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, drop that and uh, ask. Oh, what was the question? Never mind. I'll drop it. Okay. I want to know. I just wanted to know if they had done any enforcement on. Title Seven, Chapter Six, which is which states uh, interference with an officer in the performance of his duties. But I can bring it up another time. I just thought, you know, based upon statements that have been made the previous uh, in the previous meeting under this topic. I just want a clarification of some of it. It's not important. Okay, well, might I suggest that if, if there's a specific you know, question that you have regarding code force enforcement statistics, as you know, you know, our report here doesn't give us the details and the system that they have. Don't, I don't know if they can go back that far, but I'm guessing this would require some research um, and uh, Officer Lewis doesn't have that on the top of his head. I just remembered the, the question. Uh, I had in my notes that uh, he said that the new software would be uh, live at the end of October. It's pretty close to the end of October. So I wanted to know if that's gone live and when we can expect more detailed information like what I was asking. So uh, the police department went live with the new software system as of yesterday. Code enforcement is currently yes. delayed uh, for moving into that new system until after January 1st. Oh, so we're not gonna be able to get more specific information like under animal control, how many summons and complaints were issued and on what codes? No, the city is not providing that information in this report. This the report that you're receiving is the report that the city manager has asked us to prepare, and any additional reports um, are not generated at this time by the city. And we won't be able to expect to get it until January. 
I don't know what that software capability would be. Um, if you have specific questions about summons and complaints and how many were issued, you can address that to uh, the courts. Okay. Thank you, Officer Lewis. Um, any other questions um, on the code enforcement statistics from September? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and move into um, the proclamation from October 2020 um, that was uh, presented this past Monday, I believe, which I, I wasn't able to attend, um, a proclamation declaring um, October 2020 as Code Enforcement Officer Month for the city of Inglewood. I think that's wonderful, Dave. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, the all of officers were recognized at the city council meeting is? Well, this was a proclamation um, nationally, uh, this is the, I believe, the first year that um, the national organization has uh, put out to municipalities to recognize October as Code Enforcement Officer Month. And, and I really want to make sure that you, if you've read through the proclamation, it's not just code enforcement officers that are being recognized here. It really recognizes all of those within the city that work within the code. And that involves zoning, it involves the building department, to some extent, it involves the fire marshal's office. So it really is recognizing um, uh, the overwhelming need that municipalities have um, for code and those that uh, enforce those codes. Was there, um, so there was a proclamation held during the city council meeting. Was there any other um, ceremony or anything done for the, the staff? No, at this, it, Typically, there would have been some type of a ceremony, yeah. um, but because of our current state of affairs, there, there wasn't any kind of a, there was a recognition and, and all of my team listened and we greatly appreciated um, what council had to say and we took their feedback and um, there's been a lot of amazing changes that have happened within the city and, and I'll be the first to say we still have opportunities and challenges to overcome, um, but I think overall in, in the last five years we've we've made tremendous strides. And one of the biggest things that I'm excited for is we're going more mobile. We're each gonna have um, capabilities like officers to work out in the field starting after January where um, we'll be able to take on uh, cases out in the field and document stuff instead of having to duplicate a lot of our work. So I really look forward to, to our process changes that are gonna take place after the first of the year. Well, I, I hope you will share with your staff, Dave, how much we all appreciate the, the energy and the efforts um, of the code enforcement team to help Inglewood um, be as wonderful as we are. So thank you. I, our... I appreciate that. We do have a staff, uh, a quasi staff meeting. It's going to look a little different tomorrow um, based off of the new Tri County Health Orders. Um, but I will convey your, um, your comments to them and thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. You guys also are part of the Code Enforcement uh, Recognition Month. I really need to thank all of you for your contribution and volunteering to your community um, to, to uh, exercise the voice and be a conduit for our community. It's very important to have meetings like this and all of your feedback and input um, really does lend to this month as well as code enforcement because you have a direct say directly to counsel from the community um, what's happening in the community. And so I want to thank each of you for your um, feedback and the opportunities that you uh, give code enforcement to make changes and that you are partnering with us and working alongside us to promote um, healthy and safe communities. So thank you to each of you. Great. Thank you. All right. So um, are is there any other comments or questions for Supervisor Lewis? Monica? Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to um I say that that is really awesome and um I was thinking about that today after I saw that I saw it in the minutes and or in the agenda and I thought um you know a lot of what you guys do is pretty thankless and um I just kind of closed my eyes for a minute and thought what would our community be like if you didn't do the work you do um, that really is underappreciated in so many cases. So I, I just want to say thank you. And um, this is, you know, and maybe we can talk about this later, but as, uh, as a member of the communications 
team. I just think this is a great um, opportunity to, to, to uh, code enforcement's horn a little bit and bring a little positive awareness to all the good things they do for the community. Colleen? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, Chris Hargoth will publish that in the next Citizen Magazine. Feel free to provide that feedback to him. <laughs> okay. Um, question, Dave, when you say the new Tri-County Health Order, um, what, what impact does that have on your team? Um, so the way that we're doing our work here is we're very safe. We still follow all of our mask mandates when we're not in our personalized space. Um, it, it, so who here has seen our office space? Okay. Um, so our office space is set up um, where we sit farther than six feet apart. We do have dividers between each of us. Um, we are able to stagger when people are working in the office and working in the field. We have individually um, issued vehicles that are sanitized frequently. Um, so we're not sharing vehicles and it, risking our exposure. Um, we are limiting our contact with the public right now. Um, we have reverted back to um, doing a lot of stuff by mail um, versus going up to someone's door and posting stuff and, and having that engagement. If we are needing to issue summonses, we're really eliminating or, or minimizing our um, points of contact. So instead of requiring summons, we're personally serving them so they're not having to sign stuff and share pens with us. So we're really trying to take those um, extra steps to try and not just protect our code officers, but also to continue to promote um, the health of our community and the health of our of our animals, because it has scientifically proven that interactions with animals can um, transmit the coronavirus. So we're really limiting that as well. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So moving on, we'll go ahead and I'm going to recognize our city council liaison, um, share, uh, city council liaison, uh, Mayor Rita Russell. Sorry. <laughs> <I just laughs> That's okay. I'm council <laughs> Russell, member at large. Just wanted to yeah, thank you. <laughs> clarify that. I appreciate that. Thank you, Chair Bowden. Um, I, I just, I do want to congratulate code enforcement. I greatly appreciate, um, Supervisor Lewis's um, input, and um, I know that code enforcement are the front frontline people, and, and I greatly appreciate the fact that he uh, was very appreciative of all of you because um, it really is your job as citizens to help make them better, and and so um, I appreciate that and. Uh, Thank you for that. And it actually was the last council meeting, which was not Monday night. It was the uh, 19th of um, October. It was in that council meeting that that uh, proclamation was made. Um, the other thing that was really interesting to me that night, and I actually would encourage you all to look at uh, the 2020 citizen survey results came out that night. We discussed that in the study session prior to um, to the meeting, um, and just just a couple of quick things that Heather Locke um, reported on is that safety and economy were trending down, especially in the police department and the fire department. Um, the there were economic challenges in that. Um, 14% of residents' outlook on their own economic stability was not great. Uh, one in two residents um, are facing housing cost stress. And um, so I, I just think that it would be a good thing for you all to look at. Um, and just maybe there's something in there. I mean, there were some things about code enforcement, but I'm not sure that it involves code enforcement um, as far as your purview. I think it was code enforcement more maybe in the community development department. But anyway, um, I, I think those are good things for, for us to look at. So if you have time, you might wanna look at that. I think it's probably on the, the city website too, but it's definitely in the packet for October 19th. 
Is, is that correct, um, Supervisor Lewis? The um, and you all have the citizen survey too, correct? We do, and it's it's. Uh... Thank you for pointing that out. Um, it is posted on our website. I think there's a link that's been published or will be published that actually goes directly to the to the survey results. Okay, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank I participated you. in that. Uh, th they mailed out um, I, 1,200 um, things. I think there was an opportunity to do some online respondents too. And they're selected at random. Um, it talks in the survey, you know, how the protocol. I, I think I received an email asking me to participate. So I did it that way. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. I, Are there any other, uh, Officer Lewis? Again, I just wanted to point out, thanks, um, Council Member Russell, for pointing that out. And I, I want you all to know, and this is our commitment from code enforcement, that we're very sensitive to the impacts economically that are occurring within our city. And we're really working with our residents. Our primary goal here is voluntary compliance. And we understand the struggles that are occurring within our city. Uh, and we're really trying to work with our citizens um, to give them extra time and to work with them. As long as people are communicating with us and they're upfront and they're honest and they're letting us know their circumstances, we are able to work with them within the purview of code to try and get them into compliance. The last thing we wanna do is tie up a court system for someone who really is indigent or has some financial concerns about trash and stuff. And we really wanna try and find and connect some of our communities. One thing to highlight is our Snow Buddies program. I'm so excited that that's been launched um, where citizens and people who can't um, fend for themselves can or are or disabled can have um, somebody partner in their neighborhood um, to shovel their walk. So thank you, Rita, for pointing that out. There are some significant disparities in this, having a moment, um, some significant concerns related to the economy and how that's impacting our citizens. And we talk about this frequently within the police department, especially within um, the code enforcement division, because that's the first thing that you have to do when you make hard decisions is some of your services have to be cut um, to, to put food on the table. And so we're trying to connect people with food banks, with their religious organizations, with community members. If they're struggling, we're here to try and connect people. It's not just us out there enforcing the code, we are a community resource. So I wanna impart that on everyone. I appreciate that. Thank you, Supervisor Lewis. Okay. Anything else, Council Member Russell? I have nothing else. Thank you. All right. All right. So let's move forward to agenda item number six, which is the communication subcommittee update. Okay. I guess that's me. That is, yes. Okay. Um, so I shared um, with you at our last meeting that I, I had, a, I think I had already met with uh, Chris Hargus and um, so uh, we've started putting our heads together on getting the ball rolling on this. And so today I would like to share with you, and I, um, do you have it, uh, Julie, the uh, PowerPoint? I don't, I, I, I don't. You don't? I didn't receive it. Ooh, okay. I have a uh, Word document, but not the... No, I sent you an email of um, an updated media plan it should be no let me try to send that to you again really quickly um but um generally um we while i do that i will just tell you all that um, um our next article is um if we want it to be written by the copywriter, which is, I think the best way to get it in, in its entirety, um, it needs to be in by November 6th. And um, we're gonna go ahead with that original idea, um, uh, uh, kind of getting back to basics. Um, I conducted an interview with Officer Lewis um, and he provided me with 
some really excellent responses that can be condensed into a really positive and informative uh, uh, um, piece to, um, you know, kind of let the community know what code enforcement does, how it works generally, and um, how, I'm sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. Um, uh, basically highlighting all the good work they do in the community and, um, and how citizens can interface with them. So um, I'm attaching this one more time and sending it to you right now. <clears throat> So let me know. Yeah, if you I um have gone. I know I've gone through all my emails. Like it's not there. Um, it's happened to me before. I don't. Well, if I put it up, can I share it? Yeah. Okay. If you if you pull, you should be able. I think. Even though I'm not the. Do you have a uh, on the bottom of your screen? It says I can share a screen. Share screen. There you go. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. Um, huh. I don't know. Huh. I, I, you know, I, I'm not really familiar with Zoom as um, I always share on Google Meet. I, I'm not quite sure how to do this. I'm sorry, everybody. It's bizarre. <clears throat> so go ahead, Maureen. You should be able to share it. There should be a green icon on the bottom row. Yeah, I've clicked on that and then. And, and then you should be able to go and find the document. Okay. Okay, let me try this. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh. Boy, this is just taking me in all different kinds of places. I am, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to do this, you guys. Um, that is so bizarre. So can you resend the document, the PowerPoint to me? I just did. You didn't get an email from me? I'm sorry to be wasting everybody's time right now. Okay, I found it. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so, all right. <clears throat> and, I, and I wanted to share this. Um, I, I took what Julie did last year and just updated it and added in, you know, kind of the threads that we've been talking about in our conversation about this. And I just would appreciate your input. Um, so that it can be something that we enter in, in the record as our plan. What are you all seeing? I see it. Okay, perfect. Okay. So if you, can you go to the next page? Yes. Great. And so um, we just kind of updated the priorities. Um, it, so uh, we, wanted to have our priorities be to increase voluntary compliance, which it sounds like it's already quite high um, by educating residents on current city codes, um, informing the public about um, accomplishments and future initiatives of code enforcement, um, and to seek feedback from the community on code and code enforcement processes through public meeting surveys and social media. So, um, and the thing I'd like to get your feedback most on today is um, surveys. So um, you can go to the next slide, Julie. Okay, so we're um, our hope is to make a media plan that is goes throughout the year and is specific to Emerald Ashbor, kind of like alongside what code. Uh, all the other things that code enforcement does. And so we talked about this last time, but um, more specifically, we'd like to do monthly videos on social media uh, the months of March through July to um, emphasize the importance of being aware of 
the Emerald Ash Borer and its eminent um, entry to our city and, um, and give people um, opportunities to seek resources to treat their trees or cut them down. Um, linking through the banner ads um, and putting, making it the focus of this, the spring quarterly article. Um, there, uh, um, I can't remember her name uh, at the city, but she alerted me to the fact that we already have a dedicated web page to the Emerald Ash Borer. So um, I was just looking at that right before I got on this meeting and it looks like it's something that we can update and uh, put some bells and whistles on. So that was a great thing to find out. Um, and maybe we can make it more accessible, easier to find. And then um, uh, Rita had suggested, which I think is a great idea, reaching out to the Inglewood Her Herald to put that article, perhaps the one that Julie wrote in print um, for people who are not uh, using the internet to get their information. I thought that was a fantastic idea. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how we can put uh, some type of flyer or mailer uh, maybe in uh, something that's already going out. So if anybody has uh, suggestions on when that would be, um, when that would be something good to do and, uh, and in what publication. And um, what I'd really like your feedback on today is um, producing some good questions for um, online surveys. And um, I have another slide, I think, that discusses um, what we'd like to do as far as that. Ah, there it is. Okay. So um, the first, um, the communications team at the city was really excited that we might be able to generate some surveys. They're looking for topics. So um, I, I would just appreciate all of your help with coming up with some questions that would help us um, kind of get the pulse on what people know about Emerald Ash Borer and how they would respond giving, maybe how they would respond giving, given a certain situation or incentive to treat their trees. Um, and then I thought um, animal, um, animal licensing welfare, um, you know, th this has come up in several meetings that I've been to um, with Denver Off Leash and the Parks and Rec Commission and, um, and here in code enforcement, um, animal licensing has come up um, over and over as, as, and leash laws, et cetera. So I thought um, maybe um, putting out a survey on those topics um, we could do. And then um, kind of like we did within our own committee, um, taking, getting a survey on um, code enforcement, um, seeing what, you know, getting people's views and input on what they think the priority should be. Um, so I don't know if you think those are good topics, um, but that's what we came up with. And um, if we could agree to do one or two or all three of those and just put our heads together on making it some something that's actually useful um, that we can get that information back in and put it to good use. And I have a question, um, yeah. Monica. <clears throat> so we did this, the, is the communications team willing to help us with the survey or do they have a survey tool no. that we can use? Yeah, they have a service, uh, an online platform. Uh, and monkey survey, survey monkey. Yeah, that's what's been really great about this whole process is every time I um, give them an idea, they're like, we have, we have an app for that. You know, they, they have uh, systems in place for getting this new website. It's, this is just a really, this is something that I just really want us to take advantage of all they have to offer. It's it's there, and this all of these things will give us more ways to reach out to the community. So we're not just depending on those quarterly articles. And they're going to do all the heavy lifting. We just have to provide the ideas, the content. You know, let's put some thoughtful questions in, and they'll get it out there for us. I think that's I think that's great because personally, as someone with a full time job, I don't have the time 
to do all that stuff. So I'm really appreciative. That they, that they yeah, there's are. a science to survey. So it's good to have someone that has that expertise. Exactly. We don't want to burn people out with too many questions or ask questions that are hard for people to understand who aren't immersed in this the way that we are. So yeah, so I just think it's a, it can be a really positive and useful tool for all of us. Co Coeen had her hand up for you. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, appropriate now because we're talking about surveys, but uh, I was alerted by um, Monica that uh, the city is doing a monthly newsletter, but I'm assuming it's online. So it would only go to people that uh, were signed up with the city with their email address uh, and Facebook. I'm sure that it's going to be on Facebook too the city site for Facebook, uh, but I didn't see that on here as one of the sources for getting the word out on uh, EAB. But one other thing I wanted uh, to uh, have her address, Monica address with, uh, with the communications team is the possibility of maybe inserting uh, something that can be torn out and either delivered or picked up for delivery uh, for a survey for uh, the EIB article that never got published that Julie spent so much time on and it was a really comprehensive one uh, to get that out right away. And I understand it can go in the Herald, but also maybe an insert in the January uh, issue of the Citizen Magazine that can be ripped out uh, since they aren't going to be able to publish it uh, in addition to whatever we're going to be doing for the August one. And uh, for getting information on the surveys, uh, I suspect, would it be okay with you, Monica, if uh, we individually came up with some ideas and sent them to you on your website? I mean, on your uh, email? Mm -hmm. Would that yeah. be the easiest way? Yeah, that would be great. I just want to collect good ideas. I just think that um, putting our heads together will will get a better product. Um, as far as uh, what you were saying about a newsletter, I think you're referring to um, those alerts, and uh, you can sign up for alerts from different um, committees and things um, through the city of Englewood. So that's kind of what I was talking to you about. It's not a physical newsletter. It's, and it oh, is, that's something that people seek out. That's I, I shared that with you. Yeah. Oh, I, I misunderstood you then because I thought you uh, were all excited because Tony Arnaldi was doing a monthly newsletter. But it's um, everything that Tony's putting out is online. So yeah, I, I what think I what I was, yeah, I was just trying to kind of give you an idea of that there are just a lot of different ways that the city's putting out information. Um, hey, Dave has had his hand up for a while. Maybe he can shed some light. <laughs> so I want to let everyone know there is a new um, communication project that I think came out a month or two ago. Um, you may have seen it published if you're involved in social media. It is an electronic communication only, I believe, at this time, and mm -hmm. you have to opt, it, opt in. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the website. I think it's called eCommunity. Um, that does send out a monthly um, informational um, newsletter. I, I think I received my first one uh, when I was on vacation, so I just briefly looked at it. Um, but there is an, it is opt-in. So you, it's not going to everybody. You do have to provide your email address so that you can receive that information. And I believe that it covers all kinds of topics from events to um, potentially, I think they're gonna start including statistics from the city in that, in that newsletter. Um, so they're still ironing out what it's gonna look like, but it's uh, ever evolving. Where, where do you find the, the place to opt-in? Do you, do you know? Um, if, if it's okay with you, I don't have access to that information just because of the way my screen shared, but I'll email that to you directly um, so that you can disseminate the information. That'd be great. Thank you. I wasn't aware of that. Um, Carson, you had your hand up for a while there. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, 
I, I, I'm, I like the idea of doing the survey and I, I would just like to be able to participate in reviewing the content before it goes out because honestly, some of the surveys I've seen come out of the city, um, I've been very frustrated with as someone trying to fill them out because they're, they don't take into account much nuance. Um, and I think that it's worth putting the effort into like, like the original trash one, I gave up on it right away because it was so biased. You know, I'm on that committee now, but I, I wanted to answer the questions in it, but I couldn't because there weren't reasonable answers to make. So I just, I want to say that I would like to be involved in whatever the content is of the survey that goes out. I totally agree, Carson. That's a, that's exactly what I'm getting at. <laughs> and that's why um I'd like us all to work together. I, I just really encourage everyone on the committee to please, please share your thoughts and ideas on this. Um, and uh, like Colleen, your idea for the magazine is, is good. And I will um, reach out to um, Chris Harguth and see what the possibilities are for that. Carson? Oh, and just one other thing. I when um member johnson said about the inglewood website emerald ashbor i i started looking at that and there's one link in there emerald ashbor.info and if you go to there there's actually a an app you can download for your phone that is for makes it easier to identify trees which is kind of cool mm -hmm. and that's all from the u.s forest service right uh that colorado. one is the colorado department of agriculture site got it um CSU originally had um, a lot of information on EAB, and it appears that that information has been transferred to, I think, either the Forestry Service or their ag Agricultural Department. Um, but they, that has been the most robust site um, out there. Mm -hmm. um, I've started uh, making a resource page to share with the communication team at the city so they can build something out. So also, if anyone comes across a good resource, um, please do email it to me and I will um, include it in that document. Um, yeah, I, there, there, so much work has been done by, you know, um, I think it's the US Forestry Service and um, they've got all these tools and I just want to make sure that we don't reinvent the wheel. I mean, there's no reason for us to rebuild something that's already there. It, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's something that we're able to tap into and utilize. Um, it's in the public domain. So I'll, I'll send you the link to that. Great. That, I, I just looked, the app was made by Colorado State University. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty so cool. something happened where they turned it over. Um, that whole project has appears to have been turned over to the Forestry Service. So. Mm -hmm. Monica, did you want? Or did you want to continue on? Yeah, Maybe. I'd like to just get through this and okay. move on. Um, so I think you need to go ahead and ahead. Um, so just kind of building on what you did last year, Julie. Um, uh, there are listed there some top violations that probably should be addressed annually. And um, I think that uh, code enforcement plans, like looking forward is equally important. So we've just got a, a nice little list of things that um, um, would also be included in our all of our communications. So um, and you see animal licensing there again. And along with whatever we're doing, we wanna put what's seasonal. So if we can look at the charts, I think those are next. Um, I had a little <laughs> trouble with this. <laughs> oh. Here, I'll take that out for you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I had a little trouble with this because I really wasn't aware of our presence on social media, sadly, during yeah. this year, since I've been on the committee, I don't really feel like this has been, I think probably with COVID and everything else that's going on. Um, well, what happened is 
the idea was was great, but the mm -hmm. responsibility for building the posts fell on us, um, mm -hmm. the same people that were writing the articles. Mm -hmm. um, and at first, I we were providing the content, um, but they weren't utilizing it in their social media because they had an editorial calendar and it just didn't mesh with what they were working on. So now that you know we'll be incorporated with their media calendar, you know maybe you know, we'll, we'll now have a presence um, on those social media sites. I have seen some things here and there um, on next door, you know, regarding snow removal that, that has been put out by the city um, in the past, um, but that was just coincidence. So I think now that you're collaborating with them and, and you're being, in, you know, code in enforcement is being included in the editorial calendar, we'll have a greater chance for getting coverage. It was just too much for us to provide all the content for mm -hmm. all those different outlets. Mm -hmm. Well, and as I mentioned, it sounds like from my conversations with them that they're they're going to take the ball and run with it. We, we will provide that basic, you know, here's the topic, here's here are the facts, you know, and they're going to zhuzh it up and get it out. So um, I am excited about that. So you can go on to the next one. So this is our kind of wish list. Um, so, and again, this is just a working document. So um, if you have anything you'd like to add or take away or that you don't think is relevant, just, you know, again, reach out to me or say it now. But um, we're, I, like I said, we're gonna go ahead with that first article, like kind of starting back at the basics with code and the seasonal reminder will be snow removal. And um, if we can get some additional material um, as Colleen was mentioning in about the Emerald Ash Borer, since we did not get that last article in, um, I'll certainly try my best to um, uh, advocate for that. Uh, but it will definitely be the spring topic. Um, and um, I, I thought for summer going into fall, animals and possibly licensing, if that can, conversation continues, might be something to talk about. Maybe Officer Lewis can guide us uh, with that. And then um, in the fall, just talk about um, you know, we, in our last meeting, we talked about keeping wood beautiful, having the leaf collection, and maybe kind of tying into some other programs that might help people around um, preventing code violations. Um, and then talking about other, um, you know, to uh, topics that come up like parking of inoperable vehicles and things like that. So if anybody wants to weigh in that on any of those, they're not set in stone. But as you can see, I've X'd out everything on social media and the website because my real hope is that we can just keep hammering out these um, kind of one hitters to all the social media components that the city has, including any um, surveys that we come up with. So um, I really think that the website and social media is, is how we can get so much more accomplished. So if we're consistent in our messaging. Colleen? Yeah, uh, next door seems to have a bigger reach. Are we, is the city and Tony Arnaldi um, still posting stuff on next door? Yes. So we yes. might wanna add that. Oh, you do have it, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she was in the meeting that I attended with them. So um, they're all like anxiously awaiting, you know, our first post, which I think should be about code enforcement um, officer month. I think that would be a great place to start. Great. Colleen? Yeah, uh, that uh, has already been done for us. <laughs> with that proclamation, you, we just need to make sure that gets printed somewhere. Right. And we, we be a little more specific about code because that's really the only thing we have to do. The only thing within our purview is to communicate code mm -hmm. and process. And, and I think it's okay code. to explain, sorry. 
I think it's okay for us to communicate about the existence of code enforcement. I mean, isn't that what we're trying to educate on at this point is that Inglewood has a code and that there is an enforcement component to that. And please meet Dave Lewis, <laughs> who heads well, up that's, that team. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's important that we get their mission statement out in front. And I just did a, a real quick draft and I put their mission statement exactly. And I wanted to start with congratulations on code enforcement month, and then say the mission of our code enforcement unit. And I used exactly their words is to enhance and preserve our neighborhoods and business districts while providing a safe, healthy and environmentally friendly community. We strive to gain voluntary compliance through education, community involvement, and enforcement of ordinances in a fair and unbiased manner while providing superior customer service. And the process of enforcement is outlined in Title 15 and applies to Title 15 codes, Title 7, Chapter 1, which is animal control and welfare, Title 6, noise, and is intended to help property owners maintain their properties uh, and animals and obtain voluntary compliance. Graffiti and ice and snow have their own process in the codes. And then I put down the process out of Title 15. Uh, that's just, that's 200 words. Uh, so it would go in really swiftly. Uh, and then if it's next to Code Enforcement Month, I think the two uh, go together. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what you sent me today, uh, Colleen. What? You sent me that. And I yeah. believe that you sent me that yeah, today. Yeah, I did. And, um, so my, yeah, so my, and, and it kind of, and it does go along with uh, some of the answers that Dave gave for the interview questions. So, um, so yeah, that'll all be kind of uh, incorporated together um, with the help of the city copywriter. So that'll be really nice to see. Maureen. Well, I hope it was useful. <laughs> Maureen? Um, yeah, two uh, copies of the proclamation were given to the city manager's um, office. So as soon as the mayor signs it, they should be available. I figured one, co one original would go to code enforcement because um, I'm the one that prints those out and makes the proclamations and one would stay with the city clerk's office, but there will be two original documents. Great. I just wanted to let you guys know. Okay. Monica, was there anything else that we needed um, to go through? Well, I had a, I actually had a question for Maureen, um, but I, just, I would just like to say, I've never done this type of thing before. So, um, I, I know what I would like it to look like, but I appreciate everyone on the committee's input. So um, thank you in advance. I know some of you have been on committees for a long time and worked with the city more. And so I appreciate everybody's input. My question to Maureen is about communications. Cause I still, I, this is something that um, just seems to trip me up a bit. And um, uh, within a subcommittee, I'm what I understand is that if there's three people, if we're all copy, um, including each other on emails, that goes to open records. And so um, I, my question is, if I create a document to collect information that, uh, that, every, that the people on the committee can access and add to, is that, um, something I can do that we can do? Yes. And okay. now if you're just, just going to do it via email, um, make sure that they don't reply to you with questions. Okay. Um, it's a one way. It's a one way only. Otherwise you'll violate open meeting law. Um, and they, if they are able to make changes to the document, that's fine. But please remember that like this committee is under the umbrella of the city council, any subcommittee that you guys form is also under that same umbrella and must abide by open meeting law regulations. So when, okay, so I can have an, a document that people can dump ideas and information onto. 
You can, so, yes. And, but when I can, when I communicate to the other people on the committee, I address them individually only. That's correct. And they can, and they can't ask me questions about what I've sent. They can, they can reply to you as an individual. Okay. You don't want to make it a group email. Okay. Because then you'll be violating open meeting. So one-on-one okay. -on -one communication is okay. You can send out to each individual the same question okay. in, separate, in separate emails and have them respond directly just to you. And you can incorporate that information into your document. And they can ask you directly questions, but there cannot be a group communication. You're then having a meeting that hasn't been posted and you'll okay. be in violation. Thank you. I just, I appreciate that clarification and going forward, I, I'm sure I've messed up on that, but um, going forward, um, I, now I clearly understand. I didn't, I didn't realize that a subcommittee had the same. They, um, they fall under the same regulations because this committee that is under city council was created by city council must abide by open meeting law just as city council must. And any subcommittee that is created by you guys is also under those same rules and regulations. But if you guys ever have any questions, you can always email me. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. You're very saying, I get it. That was very clear. Well, Carson? my question is, in, in some cases, it makes sense to be able to have a conversation over email. Is there no way that we can do that and then have that content become part of our record so that it is public? Is there no yeah. way for us to have a conversation through email and then just make it public? You can totally have a conversation under email, but it would be a meeting. You would have to have an agenda and post the meeting. In advance of you the conversation? You can totally do that. And as usual, the 24 hour rule, which is the rule from Colorado, the state of Colorado, the, the agenda must be posted 24 hours in advance, but the subcommittee can actually call a meeting and have an agenda. And, and I would post the agenda for you, of course, because that's my job. Colleen? Uh, yeah, always before anybody can send out a blanket email to all the members and say, please respond to me only, no reply all. And that takes care of the problem. If that wasn't, I, and I wasn't clear in the response. So it, if Monica wants to send out, hey, I, I need some ideas on surveys. Here's the topic, uh, make your suggestions, but don't notify anybody but me. Maureen? That will solve the problem. And that was said by the city attorney in a meeting uh, some time ago, it was also said by uh, the city manager several times and council. So that's just my input from history. Maureen? Maureen is absolutely correct. However, if you make a mistake and don't read that portion of it <laughs> and you reply all, you've just violated open meeting. So what so, happens when we violate open meeting law? Well, actually, it's it's amazing to me. Colorado really doesn't have much bite to their open meeting law, uh, which, as I said, surprises me. Not much. I mean, you can come back to the next meeting and you can remedy the um, the violation, okay, by saying, I didn't understand that it was a violation, blah, 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 blah. This is the reasons that this happened. And you do that in a public meeting, okay? okay. So then you're normal, it's normally remedied, you're good to go. Got it. My, my point of saying one-on-one -on -one because the sub, that subcommittee is only three people, um, you can do it, you can as Colleen stated, it's totally legal to go ahead and send out a blanket email stating, please don't you know, reply all. But as I stated, if you do reply all, then you violated open meeting. So it's always best to be safe than sorry. Colleen? Yeah. Um she I hit the nail on the head when she said they don't have much bite to it. There's absolutely no punishment or anything about violating an open meeting law. 
Regardless, I don't want to violate it. And I'm happy to <laughs> I'm happy to send separate emails. I just really wanted to clarify. So like for the survey, Maureen, I can send out um, a, a solicitation individually to every member of the committee, not just the communications committee. Yes, you can, but please put in there, don't reply all. Well, well no, I'll do it individually. Oh yes, okay, great. Yes, you can. Thank you. I feel so much better about this and that gives me some, you know, some empowerment to actually move on some of this stuff. So thank you all uh, in advance for um, what I know will be good contributions. That's all I have. We can move on. A question. Um, so the, the material or the content is due to the city. Um, I think you said November 6th. What do you need from the committee in order to meet that date? Um, as far as as far as our um, article goes, I don't need anything from you guys unless you have an opinion on uh, on what what I gathered so far, which is the information from Colleen um, and her opinion on what it should include, and my interview with Dave, who I think is the best source for um, information about code enforcement. So um, uh, I, moving forward, the only thing that I would need from you guys is uh, survey questions if in fact um, uh, Chris Harguth is um, able to make space for that initial article and, a, and an Emerald Ashbor article as well um, or insert or survey um, that Colleen had mentioned. So I need to explore that with him. But I mean, I would just, um, you know, solicit you all individually if, if that opportunity arises. Colleen? Uh, yeah, we've always, my, okay. Uh, we've always before not submitted any article without the committee getting to look at it. So uh, once you've decided what you're going to do before November 6th, which isn't very long, could you please notify each one of us of what it is and what the article content is. Yeah, so. um, maybe this will help you. Um, uh, uh, November 6th is when I need to submit things to the copywriter. The final submission to the magazine is not for a few weeks after that. So we're, we're just moving up that deadline to have it um, done by the city copywriter. Can I ask you a couple questions? So since we've changed things a little bit where we're not writing, actually being the copywriters, the city is now actually doing that for us. Mm -hmm. Does that change the approval process? Um, I, what, I, what I am to understand, and I can go, I can double back to make sure this is correct. But from what I understand, we um, give the framework and the and kind of the guts of the article and they produce it and then we get to see it before it gets approved. We might not even wanna look at that because um, that, that process, because there were two steps that we took before things were sent to the city. And of course, when we sent it to the city, it was pretty much in final form. But number one, we, we did a check with code enforcement to make sure that what we were saying was accurate. Um, just just is it is a sign off and then secondly we had the committee approve the content also before it went to the city so if you're just providing the material and then the copywriter is writing it at what point will we get a sign off by code enforcement and a sign off by the committee i and think have to answer it now it's just a retort it's a question well, that's my uh, that's my action item. I will uh, do that first thing in the morning. So, I did I share? I, I think I shared with you the, the how how that worked before. Yeah, you um, did. Okay, good. Yeah. I was going to say, if you don't have that, I'll be happy to send that to you. No, I have it, and that's a great um, that's a great point you make, and I would like to give you all a better answer. So, Colleen. Yeah, we had before. Uh, I thought it was settled that they liked the way our tone and the way we wrote our articles. Uh, and they wanted us to continue doing it. But now it sounds like they're going to do what they want to do. And our last article was uh, specifically, we 
crafted it and crafted it and crafted it until it said everything we wanted it to say in 200 words so that they didn't change anything. And it does it sounds now like we don't have any control over what they do or the tone or anything. We, we never we never did. Um, they, the ultimate editor was the city. So even though we submitted that content, it was still modified, but they knew it was approved and, and accurate. Um, so we never really did have that control. The benefit now is that we don't have to do all that writing ourselves. Um, they have a copywriter that will do it for us. And then that's what Monica is, is saying was we, we've got to have an approval process now um, to make sure that you know we maintain accuracy and then everybody has a chance to you know see what's being done before it's finalized. But they did accept our last article as we wrote it. It, no changes at all. Yeah, that was coincidence. <laughs> That's the first, that'd be the first time. <laughs> well, it's because they didn't have to cut anything. Yeah. Like the parking article, they cut uh, everything about Title 15, uh, okay. inoperable vehicles and such, but they left everything else pretty much the same. Yeah. But they did hack up the snow and ice a lot because we couldn't get it into there for 200 words. But the alley one was right on target. And so they had nothing they could change or needed to change. Monica? I would, I would just say that we haven't done this yet. And I think it could be a really good system. And, um, you know, we don't, the jury's out on this one still. So, um, and we can always change the way we do it. But for now, I think we've got some, we've got stuff to work with and I'd at least like to try this process because if it ends up working um, I think it, it will be just really beneficial for all of us. I think it's a great partnership because they're the experts at communications and they know their channels better than we do and who looks at them. We're the, considered the experts on code so between the two of us we can come up with some effective communications even though it is different than you know, what we've been doing in the past. I think it's a, it's a real good migration and evolution uh, to a partnership, so. All right, well, Monica and uh, Kara and Kaween, thank you for all the work that you've done there. Um, and Monica, you have everything you need to move forward from us? Yeah, now that I know how to communicate properly with everyone, um, yeah, thank you. And I'll just keep plugging away at it and, um, Hopefully we can um, produce some good communications this year, this upcoming year. Thank well, you. I, I just wanna let you know, I've made mistakes too in terms of violating the open uh, meetings law. So don't feel bad. I, no one does it intentionally. It's just someone you, we, you forget. So, um, but I appreciate Maureen helping us understand how we can correct that. All I right. just have a quick question on the, the open meetings. Are we allowed to use the BCC feature on emails or does it have to be visible to, like who the email is going to? Well, just no, you, you shouldn't use the BCC. That looks like you're trying to hide having a meeting. So that would, I would totally advise against that. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. Cause that, that's a good way to get people not to reply all, but if it's, looks oh, fishy otherwise yeah. then yeah. It, it kind of looks fishy it looks like you're too because the only time i've ever used it is because whoever i'm sending the email to i don't want them to know that i've added somebody else in mm -hmm. no makes sense yeah thank you all right thank you all uh from the sub communications committee subcommittee on communications um the next um agenda item is number seven new business our I have a motion to put a review of the handbook for boards and commissions that was sent to us earlier this week by Maureen. I would like to, to get feedback um, from the committee members and send that back to Jackie um, on our behalf. Is there any other motions with regard to new business? Okay, so um, did everyone re have a chance to look at the handbook 
for members, boards, and commissions? Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask Maureen. Maureen, are you aware of any significant changes that were made or was just, is, was it? I don't think there were any changes made. Yeah. I think they're asking if anybody wants changes to be made. Got it. Okay. I, I really didn't have any, it was helpful. Oh, I know one thing that I had a question on is in our bylaws, it says that um, for attendance, um, you could have no more than two unexcused absences, but none of that language is in the attendance policy in the handbook. It only just says you have to attend 75% of the meetings. Maureen? And remember, this is kind of like an outline for you guys to fall okay. under. Okay. So but your bylaws can be more restrictive. I see. Okay. All right. I don't think I had any other. That was the only thing that jumped out at me. And then the other thing was when we were talking about subcommittees, they said that subcommittees, um, uh, were um, uh, have, were part of the Open Meetings Act only if they had three members. That if you have, if, so basically if you only have two members, you don't have to follow open meetings law. And that's completely legal. So if, if, if we change the number of a, people on the subcommittee to two, then they would not have to worry about the open meetings law? That's correct. So that's something for us to consider in the in moving forward that if it gets too restrictive, Monica, in terms of you being able to, um, you know, work with content and negotiate with the city and, and you're having problems, we could, we could take the number of people on the subcommittee down to two instead of three. Right now we have three, we could take it down to two and it remove that restriction. Okay. Um, another question and Maureen, I think these are mostly for you. Um, and I, I'm on page 18 under legal counsel. And this has to do with a question that we've had before that when we have a change to a code what is the process for us to get that approval through city council? And on page 18, it says that no ordinance can be brought to the city council until it has been approved by the city attorney's office. And yeah, I'm just, and, and that kind of goes in conflict with what the policy has been here. Um, so, I mean, I don't have really any input. You guys can ask to have that changed if that's what you want to do, because it might not have been brought to anybody else's, um, you know, attention. And also you, um, your advisory board is maybe the only one that actually does, right. you know, code changes. And so it, you might want to add some language in there that says excluding the, the code enforcement advisory council. Committee. So, so the and, and Cohen, you correct me if I'm wrong because you and I, I think, and Rita are the only ones that have been a part of this when we've changed a code before. Is we took conceptually the idea to city council, then city council approved it, and it was sent to the city attorney's office to draft it. And uh, Maureen, that was, well, that, that was the case, and it's in our bylaws that way specifically designed by the city attorney. Okay, that, so let me hear Maureen, Maureen, uh, Maureen. That is correct. What you've just stated is absolutely correct. Um, and I don't, I don't think any other committee does this for the city okay. of Inglewood. Okay. So that's why I'm saying you might want to put a, a suggestion forward to yeah. change that to say excluding Code Enforcement Advisory count Committee. Because that, that confusion came up when we were trying to revise the snow ordinance is in terms of process, how we move forward. And I remember getting caught up in that. So I'll, 
So should I send my our comments back to you and then you give them back to Jackie? Yes, please. Okay. All and right. it was laid out quite plainly that the, your committee submits directly to city council. City council doesn't actually approve what you've done. They just direct the city attorney to come up with an ordinance. Yeah, got it. Great, perfect. Um, and then on page 21, where um, it has boards and commissions with mandated liaisons, um, it's got three ex officio staff members appointed by the city manager and then two city council liaison members, which as you know, both that, that's incorrect. So I'll send that to you also. And I believe those were the only things that jumped out at me unless anybody else had something else. But, uh, Colleen? Yeah, I didn't have a chance to review it completely, but I did remember seeing something I, I didn't that I thought needed to be addressed, but I wasn't aware we were going to be addressing it here. And I would like the opportunity to have it put on our agenda, uh, the entire handbook and uh, submit. Uh, well, the, ex the expectation was that everybody would review this so that we could talk about it and give our feedback um, to Jackie because they're getting ready to revise this. So um, if you have, I don't, I don't uh, Maureen? I, there's a deadline and I don't believe you'll make it by your next meeting. So if you all want to send me your comments, I'm happy to forward them to Jackie. Okay. That's what I would like to recommend, Colleen, is that after you review it and if you have comments, go ahead and just forward them to Maureen. I can't find it <laughs> anymore. Can I get another copy of it? Yes, I'll send it to you right away. Oh, I see a kitty cat, Sonia. <laughs> Sonia, you did your hair different. <laughs> it's the cat. Sorry, Monica, you had one. This is totally unrelated. You're still sharing <laughs> that screen if you want to. Oh, thank you. Take it down. <laughs> uh, all right, stop share. All right. So I will get that to you. My, the changes that I just went through, uh, Maureen, I'll send those to you by a separate email, probably tomorrow. I'll be out through the 4th of November. I'm an election judge and I will have no time between now and the 4th. Um, okay. So the next, oh, now we get to our unfinished business. So our, we have a half an hour left and we are so very close on completing a review of the bylaws and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, um, the last uh, round that we worked with in terms of uh, the bylaws uh, updates and review. Um, let me make sure this is, yeah, it has all our comments. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So as a reminder, um, our enabling legislation was updated um, and, and that caused us to go back and do a review of our bylaws. Um, I'm going to start where we left off um, at our October meeting. Um, and as you remember, at the time we had all of the board members review the bylaws and provide input. If there are no comments on here, um, or if there's no comments on a section, that means that nobody had any recommended changes. So I'm going to move through these because there are no comments on them. And if somebody sees something that they want to discuss or reconsider, uh, please speak up. Um, <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, so, uh, section four time length of meetings. Um, it's, uh, you know, two hours, uh, Open Meetings Act, we already know about that. And uh, our quorum is a simple majority for the transaction of business. Colleen? Uh, do we want to change that to the way the city council does it, that 
five is the quorum, because if there's only four, there's an awful big chance that everything will be decided in a tie vote or by just a few members. So we have six, seven members. Well, we only have six now, but <laughs> uh, five, uh, council only has seven members and their quorum is five to I, ensure I, that. Yeah. I'm thinking that maybe, um, go, go, go ahead. I uh, Go ahead and finish your thought, Colleen. I shouldn't have interrupted well, I just, you, sorry. I just thought that it might uh, solve a few problems if we don't have a possibility that we could have a 2-2 two -two vote or a four vote that didn't include two members or three members. It just seemed, uh, it's not that important. I just thought wanted to know if anybody else thought something about that. Any, any thoughts, anyone have any? My, the thing that comes to my mind is, um, because we keep losing members and we don't have a full board, if we establish a number, then we might not ever meet that number. But if we keep it as a simple majority, we have a better chance for having a meeting and being able to transact business. Sounds fine to me. Okay. Carson, would you weigh in on that, please? I agree with Chair Bowden on that. Okay, Monica? I agree. Sonia? And Cara, thank you. Uh, moving forward, um, a draft agenda uh, should be created and posted. And then voting um, really is, is about, you know, everyone having a, a, the same vote or, or, one, or one vote and then uh, conflict of interest and abstention. Again, this is all pretty standard terminology and I don't think anyone had any issue. Um, we recommended removing section 11 attendance because we addressed that earlier in the bylaws and this was a repeat. My question, so that, so this would be changed to reserve, right? Is that how it goes, Sonia or uh, Cara? Okay, so that would go to, and then this section 11 that says name, I think this is a leftover from another committee. Yeah, it's a leftover from planning and zoning. Great, so we'll just strike that, that all together. Where's my, oh, this is a different, Ugh. I just wanna cross it out. How do I cross it out? I'll, I'll, I'll remember it. <clears throat> okay, that's You're that section. Through. Yeah, well, I can't find the strike through though. <laughs> that's okay. I, I'm in I'm in Google Docs, which is different than what I'm used to. So I don't know where the strike through is. I'll I'll remember it because it's too bizarre. Um, <clears throat> then we get down into to finance. Um, and again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, with approval, we have the power to receive and disperse funds. In the past, we have. The only time we've ever spent any money was for the block party and the police department was generous enough to cover any expenses that we had. So we never had to worry about that. Colleen? Yeah, the, where it says article one, section four, subsection three, that has to be struck because of changes. Uh, and it should be according to duties of article one and responsibility section three. Because okay. we made changes to that section. Can you read that again, please? Well, we have to change the third sentence where it says Article 1, Section 4, Subsection 3, because that's been changed. Okay. Uh, and it's under duties, Article 1, duties and responsibilities, Article 1, Section 3. So it has to be consistent with the duties and responsibilities. Article one, section three. Can you see what I'm writing here? And responsibilities, whatever. In article uh, one, section three. <laughs> okay, duties, okay. is that right? Is that what you're recommending? I can't read it, my eyes are too bad. 
<laughs> well, take out section four, change four to three, and strike subsection three. Ah, okay. Got it. But strike subsection three. All right. And, thank you for catching that. And the second, uh, that sentence that follows within the same uh, limitation, the committee will be empowered to contract with any private or public agency to the extent. I don't think that that's appropriate for our committee. I think that needs to be struck. And we've already got city council, city council approval. So I think in the first sentence, we need to strike city council approval. We don't have to go back to them for every every time we do this because they've already agreed in our our uh, enabling legislation that we have the power. Okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you're recommending that we strike this the rest of this paragraph. Oh, no, no, just the, the next sentence. Within the same limitation, the committee will be empowered to contract with any private or public agency to the extent required for its proper operation. Okay, so that's, that's deleted. That has nothing to do with us. Okay. And then on the first sentence, the committee, we need to strike with council approval, with city council approval, because we already have the approval in our enabling legislation. Got it. Jeez. And that's all I've got. <laughs> okay, um, so I can't find the, the strike button, everybody. So what I've highlighted is what, um, what, what is being recommended that we strike. Um, I'm I'm good with those edits. Can I have everybody else weigh in, Carson? Please. That makes sense to me. Okay. Don't delete Article One, Section Three, though. Unhighlight that. Oh yeah, we are yeah. able to correct me, that. To remember that. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. And you might double check me on that. You know that that's what the change was. Okay, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I'll remember this. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Sonia, you good with that? All right, Monica and Kara. Great, thank you all very much. The next one uh, was an article on duties uh, and we recommended that we delete that because again, that's um, a repeat of what we've already said earlier in the bylaws. Um, we did change um, the record of all committee meetings and hearings shall be kept on file in the office of the city clerk. And I, but that's it. Those are the only other changes we had. It's in the file. I can't hear you, Colleen. Oh, there you go. Except for the title. I mean, you know, like you changed article. Uh, <laughs> We nine to article seven. So question, if we remove article six, do we reserve it or do we strike it and change the numbering? I would, I would uh, just reserve it. Okay. So you don't have to change the number. Okay. I wasn't sure the protocol for that. All right. There is one other area that um, we had actually kind of marked as something that we would talk about. We didn't want to go through it right now. And I'm going to propose that we strike it out of our bylaws at this point. And it is here. It's an open item. The idea here is for responding to community inquiries regarding code. Um, and we were going to prioritize that because it, obviously there's a whole um, process to consider and other issues that need to be addressed before we go there. And I originally put it in the bylaws just because I wanted a placemaker. We have it on our list of priorities to talk about. I just don't think it belongs in the bylaws. I agree. You do. How about you, Carson? Monica says yes. Yeah. Everybody else, uh, Sonia, good. All right, so I'm going to take that out. I think that that uh, makes sense. Um, and, and it's not going away. It's just not going to be in the bylaws. We'll address it um, uh, as, as one of our priorities. 
Colleen? Yeah, there was one other thing. It was a duplicate, and I think it was in the first sentence of this section. Uh, we had already addressed it, and I can't get to it. Uh, I think it was officers. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's in that section. Uh, the general one. Uh, that part is okay, but I think it was the second one on officers. I think we've already addressed that in the code. Oh, um, the city I mean, in the bylaws. One member of the city staff to serve as a liaison, recording secretary, and one member of the police department to provide technical information. No, no, under general, uh, under the general one that where you just took out that one thing. Uh, okay. I think it's under officers, officers of the committee shall, shall be elected. elected for one year term, no officer. I think that's in the regular bylaws already. It is. it is. So I think you should strike that so it's not a duplication. I'm okay with it being duplicated here. Um, it, you know, because it's the same. I think we've talked about this before where um, uh, okay, uh, if you want to leave it, I just thought you wanted to get rid of some well, duplications the, the, that aren't exact. Well, well, the duplication was within the same document. You know, we we addressed it twice. This duplication is restating what's in the what's in the handbook, and I think it's a good idea to to keep it here. Um, okay, just, just a thought. I don't care. It's fine with me. Does anybody recall? Um, I just saw an open item here. But the city manager, did we have, did we leave this as an open item? The city manager appoints one member of city staff to serve as a staff liaison and the other um, uh, from the police department to provide technical information. And at the manager's discretion, a single individual may provide both. Do you, do you guys recall why we kept that open? I think it's. Uh, I think I had I had made a question, but I got overruled. So uh, okay, so might as well leave it and take the open item out. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So um, at this point, um, Maureen, my understanding is that I sign this. I mean, I, I will obviously need to fin you know to take all the edits out and ha give everybody one last chance to review it, but. Do I sign this? You will sign this as chairperson. Um, I'm not sure if city council needs to approve bylaws or not, but I'll find out. Okay, so um, for everybody, uh, Colleen? Yeah, it says right in our enabling legislation that, that we decide on our bylaws. Okay, all right. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll fix all these edits um, and then send them out in our minutes and then we'll have a vote on our next uh, at our next meeting and I will sign this and we'll be we'll be done with it. And congratulations. <laughs> 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 Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, any other further conversations on the bylaws from anyone? All right. Okay. The, the next item on our agenda is, um, well, I, I have committee priorities and community inquiries, and we, we just talked about that. It's already on our list. It's already been prioritized. I don't think we need to go through that unless we want to reconsider the prioritization. I pulled the document from, um, from earlier this year when we were talking about our priorities, and let me pull this back up. Um, and I'll share the screen. <clears throat> so here were the priorities that we had talked about um, in, in February. One was the bylaws, we just finished those. And the next one was animal definition. Then we talk about, then, then the, the work that we were doing on the trees, and then it would be the committee guidelines for communication within the community. Um, are you all still good with those priorities? Because the next thing that we'll be talking about is the animal definition. 
right? Okay, I will, unless someone raises their hand, I'm going to assume we're all still, we're all still good with that. So animal definition in the, uh, actually, I can just pull it up. I have, I've pulled all the animal, there we go. So what, this was something that um, Dave had mentioned um, earlier in the year, the challenge with um, the way that we've defined animals and, our, and, and their ability to um, work with animals other than dogs and cats. So currently Title Seven, Chapter One, Animals and Fowl primarily speaks to dogs and cats, but does not address any other animals. And I think Dave's request is that we expand that definition so that they can, they can work with animals other than dogs and cats. Uh, Dave, is, did I accurately represent that need? That is correct. And we're specifically looking at when we can impound an animal um, under certain ordinances, specifically the cruelty and neglect, the way that it, it reads for the impound is it says dogs or cats. It doesn't say, uh, it has, basically the reason I'm asking is we've had to alter our policy in the way that we approach animals outside of domestic dogs and cats. Um, we have had incidences revolving around chickens, um, pigs, uh, goats, um, and uh, reptiles where uh, one circumstance is we impounded a pig. Um, that pig is not defined under how we can impound for cruelty and neglect, and we had to give that pig back. Even though it was an unsafe situation, uh, the pig was neglected and not taken care of. Um, and so the reason I brought this forward was as a direct result of that pig, we have not impounded any other animals uh, under this particular ordinance outside of dogs and cats. What do you have a phrase that you all would use for an animal? So Animals I wasn't prepared large? to talk about this tonight. Um, at large, we can impound any animal at large. That's written in there. It's specifically the impoundment um, related to um, animal cruelty, where oh. we've had to leave in place animals that are not defined under the impoundment of um, animal cruelty. I see it as, do you hear me? 7-1A-9? Yes. yes. Okay. Cruelty to or neglect of dogs and cats. Correct. So it does not list any other animals uh, in there. Therefore, we cannot impound an animal that is not a dog or a cat under this ordinance. And this, this stemmed from a pig, again, like we impounded the pig, cruelty and neglect, we felt that the animal could not be there. Um, the home had methamphetamines in it. Um, and this is a past case uh, that has since been resolved. Um, the house was condemned. Um, the pig wasn't taken care of. It was, uh, had skin diseases. Its hooves were um, not being properly trimmed. Its teeth had issues. Oh. Um, and this animal, the court during the impound hearing returned the animal back to the owner who ended up putting it at a, at a, a rescue. Um, so we found a home for it long term, but in the meantime, the, home, the animal was returned back to the, to the owner because under the statute, we can't impound anything other than dogs and cats. Carson? Uh, just thinking about possible language, I mean, would it work to make it cruelty to or neglect of an illegal pet or something like that? Uh, so I would caution this board specifically about any specific language and more present it to council so that the city attorney, because it, it's it, it. they're going to probably have to change something in the definition and 
uh, might have to look at the whole concept of how this works um, and present it to council as this is where we're, we're seeing some frustrations. This is what we've been asked to do. It doesn't serve the best interest of animals in the long run. Um, and again, it's completely a procedural thing. So, Cohen? <clears throat> uh, yeah, part of the problem occurred when they decided to divide uh, the code between dogs and cats and other animals. And built into the definition was animals are excluding dogs and cats. So they did two different codes and there's a lot of disparity between the two. Uh, we can do one of two things. We can either focus on this one code, this one section, and just ask city council to make a change, allowing them to impound animals uh, for neglect, or we can ask them to change the definition of animals, take out excluding dogs and cats, and put the two together again. The simplest way would be to ask them to add the language that's in the code for dogs and cats, that in the case of neglect or alleged neglect, they can impound the, the animal. That's the simplest way, but it would be better to completely recombine the two issues and change the definition of animals. Take out excluding dogs and cats because animals are birds, they're reptiles, they're pigs, they're everything. Monica? So, I, I, I wonder if Carson was going to say this, but um, um, Officer Lewis has said that this is something that's fairly simple. They'll help him um, do this this job for the city. And I um, I think Cohen just said it herself. If we just propose um, what that this cruelty needs to be, this cruelty piece needs to be changed to reflect all animals, um, they can take it from there. That's why we have the city attorney that looks at all those things. So I think that might just start that process. So, I, I mean, at least it's a jumping off point. Colleen? Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna defer to Carson in a second, but we don't go to the city attorney. We have to go to council with right. a change. Right, right, and then, right. Carson? Um, I mean, my original thought was exactly what um, Member Johnson just said, but the more I look at it, like, I mean, I, I completely get um, member Dickerson's point. Cause I mean, if you look at this, you can see all sorts of exceptions that kind of don't make sense. Like under definitions, you know, dangerous animals limited to dog or cat. Whereas, you know, you could have a dangerous pig maybe. Um, <laughs> you can actually. Right. I mean, what's a boar? <laughs> um, and then like removal of excrement, that's specifically dog or cat right now. So, I mean, it does, and rabies. So, I mean, there are a lot of things that are currently specifically written out dog or cat that if there are, you know, I don't know what the list of legal mammals people can keep are. And even if that might be too limiting, because if they came across a snake that was not being taken care of, you wouldn't want to, you'd want them to be able to, um, take that away as well uh impound you know whatever animals not being cared for so i, I mean i i i would say there's two sides of it there's yes this whole thing ought to probably be revamped since there's several types of animals that people might have that these rules should apply to but then you know on the other side there's the only thing that Supervisor Lewis has brought up that's been an issue is specifically the, the cruelty. And so we could, you know, start there and maybe what we do, I mean, since all we're really doing is making a recommendation to city council, maybe we should just write a letter that explains all this, you know, overall, we, 
we see that this whole thing should be revamped to cover the multitude of types of animals that many of these rules could apply to. But if that's too much to take on right now, we know that there's, you know, a low hanging fruit immediate need where that the code enforcement officers have run into um, regarding cruelty. And, and that may be a, a faster fix for even city council to address than to revamp the whole thing. And then we could make that as a, a single letter recommendation of, you know, that whole concept and let them kind of pick it apart. Colleen? I would agree with that, that we just address it to city council through our liaison with a simple letter. We see a problem with dividing it between, with definitions and dividing it between dogs and cats and animals. But the immediate problem that code enforcement has addressed to us is that they cannot impound any animal other than dogs or cats, the way the code is written. So we suggest that we put in the language under uh, the cruelty section that they can impound for cruelty. Take the language out, you know, that is duplicated in uh, under dogs and cats and put that language in under animals and they can make that decision. I mean, they put in a code without any, not coming to us, not looking at it, where, whether it was duplicating something else or not. They did it in a matter of minutes, basically. So if we just present that through the uh, our liaison, just the simple letter he's talking about, and we can come up with the wording, we can just copy it from the dogs and cats cruelty section, and put it in here and cite the codes and say, we think that this will solve the immediate problem that code enforcement is, uh, is uh, addressing. And that uh, at some point we would recommend other changes, but this is the immediate problem that we think should be addressed immediately. And I think that could go through very fast, but it has to go through council. Carson? Uh, just a couple questions for Supervisor Lewis. Are there any other of these that have ever come up, dangerous, excrement, anything else that has ever been an issue? No, so we've applied different codes for different reasons. And if we don't have a way of applying a certain code, we do have, we have a witness that wants to come forward. We can apply the nuisance code to quite a few circumstances. This is the only code related to animals recently um, that has really tied our hands and really is not serving the best interest of all animals. And again, this was written when most people were only involved with fish, a few little reptiles and dogs and cats in the pet industry. As you all know, that has expanded and changed. And what people believe or perceive to be a pet has dramatically changed from different exotics to um, to different kinds of mammals. So um, it, it, we're just not, we are not serving the best interests of our community and not serving the best interests of our animals that are here. And then a second question for you. Do you know if the, if city council has ever been, had this brought to their attention? Like, do you report up through police or city manager? Like, has this been discussed at all? Um, so this was discussed with the city attorney's office when this occurred with the pig. Um, and so it was asked that we bring this forward through the proper channels and alert you all, the Code Enforcement Advisory Committee, because you are really the best voice um, to express your concerns and get community um, to follow in, basically have a buy-in to this type of a change. And, and I don't think any of you disagree that... Um, the city should have the capabilities of impounding animals that are being cruelly uh, treated or neglected. Um, and I don't think, I think an overwhelming majority of, you've seen the passion um, of our community and constituents are very pet friendly and they wanna make sure that our pets are treated properly. Cara, you had your hand raised. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I agree with Colleen in that, you know, whatever the fastest resolution, for this immediate issue, um, 
you know, I, I evoke to take that path. Um, the story about the pig is just very disturbing and I'm sure there are many others that are quite similar um, to that. Um, and it's just, that's bothersome. So as fat, you know, as soon as we could um, address this to city council is um, sort of my preferred path. So Sonia? You're on mute. You're on mute, Sonia. Sonia, you're on mute. Sonia, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. You're on mute. Thank you. There you are. There. There. Thank you. Um, can we just change the wording to um, all domesticated animals? I think the, the proposal is, on the floor is that we <clears throat> raise the issue that it needs to be expanded beyond dogs and cats and leave it up to yes. the city attorney to decide how to phrase it because there's all kinds of things that need to be considered that we're probably not aware of. That's true because we do, we are only zoned for so many different types of animals and, but um, I agree that we should just send the letter off to city council and it should get changed immediately. But probably the wording just to domesticated animals that are allowed in our code would probably suffice. Um, Dave, you had your hand, hand up. You guys all have a great resource here with your council liaison. Maybe um, council member Russell might wanna weigh in as to how she'd like to have this maybe brought to her or brought forward to council. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I was taking some notes, but I think probably you all should draft something and then vote on it. I mean, draft uh, something that you want to bring forward to council. Okay. Colleen? Yeah, it's after eight right now, but I would volunteer to write this up because I've been dealing with this for the three years I've been on council. I, I will take you up on your offer, Colleen. Um, and, and why don't we plan on having that draft uh, for our next meeting? And when you spoke earlier, you wrote what you would recommend um, be put in that letter. And it was very well, you elocuted that extremely well. So if you want to listen to <laughs> you won't have to rewrite it. I would say that perhaps I could speed up the process by putting that together, uh, sending it to you or sending it out to all the members and have them uh, say what you know they think to happen uh, about or you know agree or not agree with the way I phrased it <laughs> and uh, they can one at a time tell me whether or not they like it so uh, I would hope that we could get something going without waiting for another meeting but if we can't I still would uh, want to send it out at least through you or to the, you know, uh, so people can look at it and give input. So can, can I make a suggestion? Um, I think that if uh, member Dickerson wrote something, I think that we have, I know some committees do, do email, email votes um, on an issue to pass it. I, um, so I don't know. I think it does need to go to Chair Bowden, and then Maureen probably has um, more. Maureen, you had your hand up. Yeah. If if you vote via email, via email, then you're voting. You're having a meeting. Okay. So you have to have an agenda in order to have a meeting. But remember, you can call a meeting in 24 hours. So if Member Dickerson completes the the um, letter to Council. 24 hours later, you can have a meeting and it can be a Zoom meeting just like this and you can all vote on it. 
so if so you know it's been my experience it usually takes us a couple of iterations what if we plan on you know Colleen, you draft it and then we send it out to the committee members and seek input you know uh, back from committee members and at our next meeting we vote and move it forward well we could do that but i think it would be a good idea to do a very quick special meeting so that we don't have to deal with it again and we can get it because we are supposed to have put stuff before council in october and we don't have anything prepared and this would be at least something so uh i would i'll go ahead and prepare it i'll send it to you and you can decide if we want to have a quick special meeting well, let's ask everybody if, if they would like to do that. I, I am fine if that's what the, what the committee wants to do. Carson, can you weigh in on that, please? Yeah, I mean, I would suggest why don't we try this as a announced um, meeting where we are just communicating through email because then we don't even have to set a specific time necessarily. Is that true? We could just announce it, uh, that we're going to do a meeting to discuss through email with an agenda? No, we can't do that? <laughs> okay. No, because we'd have to post this onto the city website. All right. You, you can't, you, you have to follow the protocols. Well, that's why I was asking. I, I, yeah, but it, it's still very quick, actually. It, it amazes me, actually. 24-hour notice is very quick. So, yeah, I'm yeah. fine with that, Chair Bowden. Okay. Monica? Is that a wink or maybe not? <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, I just want to be clear that um, we would all debate what that um, document looked like in the meeting. Or are you saying, um, Chair Bowden, you would email the document to us, kind of like with the bylaws? We looked at it, put our own input, and then you collected all of that, and then we have the meeting. And then that meeting would be to have a vote to move it forward to city council. Yeah, That's like correct. this is what you've all said. Now we're having a meeting, now we can decide. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, that's down, I like that. Yeah, and both uh, ways are fine. Okay. Uh, Cara, would you be open to having an emergency 24 hour advance notice meeting so we can get this forward? To yeah, I am absolutely in favor of that. And especially with the cold temperatures um, that we've been having. And I just, I worry about the animals. So I say, let's get it done as fast as possible. Right. Sonia, you cool let's with that? Let's get it done. All righty. All right. So, um, Colleen, um, I'll be available after the 4th. And then um, I'll be happy to send that out to the committee for feedback. And then based on that, we'll set up a short notice meeting and have a vote so that we can move it forward. Um, and we're, we're 10 minutes past. Um, I'd like to set our next meeting for November and then call this meeting adjourned. So um, the next meeting would be November 18th, Wednesday. That would That's well a week before Thanksgiving. I don't even know if we get to have a Thanksgiving like <laughs> we have in the past. Is that okay with everyone? All right. The November 19th. All right. Everyone have a good night and thank 18th, you. 18th, so right? Yes. 18th. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Bye.